they have failed me. You know, I don't like that sister. I don't like that brother. That's how God designed it. It's a design of God. You need the whole body. And if you go on the streets and you see a leg, a leg just walking on the streets without the body, everybody will run away. If that leg is disconnected, in fact, some of us will be pleading the blood of Jesus when you see only leg. A person that is disconnected from the body of Christ is not living. There is no blood. Just like a leg disconnected from the body, there is no life, no blood flowing. The same way, a person that is disconnected from the body of Christ, there is no spirit of God flowing. That person is indifferent to the things of God. That's why when we are singing, you just stand there and you are looking. People are contributing money, you are so indifferent. They are praying, you just stand there. Online fellowship, you are not concerned. Your own is so oh, I come on Sunday. Just let me do what I need to do and go out. So as we pass of the body, there is mutual interdependence. It is very critical to proper operations in the body of Christ. And the last point, God is the focus, not man. God is the focus. When you focus on God, you will not care about, oh, if I do this this way, people will complain. You will do what God has appointed you to do. And everybody in the church is gifted. You have your own gift. Your gift may be different. Just like I said, I don't call me to come and sing. Because I will mess up. You know, the, 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 the tone with the So I sing in the kitchen when I'm cooking. I sing when I'm, you know, worshipping God personally. But don't ask me to come and stand here and be, you know, raising prayer. I mean, singing and all those things. I, am, I don't like, I have the gift that uh, Sister Deborah has, Sister Toyo I don't have that. My gift is different. So when we use those gifts together, there is interdependence and the church of God will flow very well. What are the points this morning? The spirit of God makes you to be part of the body. Number two, the whole body needs you. Number three, you need the whole body. And number four, God is the focus and not men. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this morning. We give you all the glory and all the honor. For the way you have described even your church, having many members, just like many parts of the body. We pray that each and every one of us, that the Spirit of God will open our eyes, even to see and to hear the area that we need to walk. That we will not just be bench warmers in the house of God. That we will not be just indifferent to the things of God. That the Holy Spirit will prepare us even to do something in the house of God. Father, we thank you and we worship you. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. We are the four square. Praise the Lord. to worship the Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Everlasting Father. Oh Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's be the mood of worship. Oh yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
hallelujah unto the Lord like people who are really alive, who are really pleasant and glorious, happy to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, let's begin to worship him. Let's begin to magnify him. Begin to exalt him. That thing we honor you, we glorify you.
Uh, I would like to call on a representative from the youth department, youth church, to tell us about the back to school program. Amen. Thank you, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Come rain, come sun, we will serve the Lord. So I'm pleased to announce to you a very important event that will be happening live at our joint venue this coming Saturday, July 29th, 2023. And this will be between 12 noon to 3 p.m. And we are titling it. Establish your plans. So this program will be titled the Youth Summer Conference slash Baptist Program. And to be a time where the children will be fully equipped with steps and directions to navigate their lives as they return back to their respective school. It will also be an avenue for the youth to engage in a small career fair as they progress in their individual stage of life. So between 12 noon to 3 p.m. Would have the youth choir gracefully beautify the event with their lovely voices. We we'll also have a quiz and gifts represent gift presentation for our children. Then we we'll break out into individual sections for the children and youth stroke teams. We we'll would have one of our own right here that just finished college come and share our experience about college life to the youth and teams. And also we'll be inviting a guest speaker to engage the youth for a progressive career afterwards. During this time also, the children teacher will prepare the children on good manners and actions as they go back to their respective schools. It will be a very long lasting experience. Please prepare to have your children stroke, stroke young adults in church for you. There will be quiz, snacks, outdoor activities, teaching, and also supplies as you go back to college and their respective schools. I'm excited for that year. I'm not going to see you. And I hope it impacts us very well. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. We can do better. Yes. Since I have known one of us here, anytime that is watching, you just be doing like this. That is. But today, when we are singing that song, Rejoice in the Lord. Hey, that individual was just doing that. I said, Eh, so this man can dance like this. <laughs> and that person, is, that person is no other than my dear friend, Opa <laughs> <laughs> I said, This man can dance like this. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Want to bless the name of the Lord. First of all, I have come to apologize once again that the heat here, that I know God is helping us, taking care of you all, and God will take care. Amen. No one will break down Amen. as a result of this heat. We have opened the side doors to allow cross ventilation. Although, once we are doing that, by the time we are having worship, we will close it again so that we are not reported by the neighbors. Because the rule is we must not do anything. Nearby, neighbors will be here. So immediately after the worship service, I mean, uh, immediately after the, watch, uh, the offering, you know, we will then open the door again. So we want to thank you for bearing with us. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will take care of you. You can see we are doing it, you know, just like that. Chap, 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 chap. And I also want to thank our dear sister who will fix it to bring this one here. You know, uh, today we are talking about uh, the, 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 the Mori Manor. Talks about one body and many members. And let's care for one another. Let's look at the needs of individuals. Let's look at their needs. It's not a question of I keep to myself. No! That's not the body of Christ. Let's see somebody who needs assistance in one place. Thank God for our deacon. 
You know, you just look at people so that they don't get stranded. Nobody tells them before it goes to take them to where they come from. These are things we need to do. We don't need to teach one another some of these things. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. It's time for offering. As I invite our pastor, oh, it's one of our guests. Who is one of our guests here? Our pastor, um, BC. Oh, good job. BC. I'm so used to the first name. <laughs> that was an honor there. When it is time to honor, you honor. So God bless you, BC. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah is not for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah needs four pints of blood. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's better. Offering time. Blessing time. Hallelujah. Offering time. Blessing time. You know when you say blessing time, say it with a smile on your face. Amen. Amen. Because offering time is a time that some people they don't want to hear about when it's time to give. So offering time. Blessing time. Hallelujah. Shall we rise up or not feet? We want to give our best to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our best to the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 38. It says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. And run it over. And shall men give to your person. Amen. Amen. So when you give to the Lord definitely God will give to you. You're giving to the Lord, you're giving out of all what he has given unto you. You're paying back to him. Praise the Lord. And it's such a shame that you see kids and that they come before God and they have nothing in their hands. And under the excuse, I don't have a job. I don't have any money. Praise the Lord. But I just want us to invite the, 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 the style of that we do. Praise the Lord. He gave everything that he had, that, that she had. She gave it to the Lord. She gave it to the temple. She gave it to the treasury. And Jesus Christ looked at her and said, yes, she gave the best. Praise the Lord. The rich people were there. They gave. But she only gave two coins, two pieces of coins. And Jesus Christ said, she outgave everyone there. What? Well, because of my intention and because Jesus, shall we pray on our offering? Father, we give you all the glory. Everlasting Father, we thank you because you are good God. Father, we thank you because out of what you are giving to us all, we are brought back to you. Lord, we say thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. You said when we give to you, when we give to you, you will be the devourer for our sins. Lord, we pray this morning that as we give our offering and we pay our tithe. Lord, we be the devourer for our sin. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, open the windows of heaven and shower down your blessings on us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, by this reason of this offering today, Lord, save someone from financial embarrassment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That you said it in your word, you said it is the young lion that do lack and suffer hunger. You said they that put their trust in you will never lack anything, God. And you said if our earthly father knows how to give good gifts to us, how much more you, our heavenly father. Father, as we give our tokens to you today, Lord, give to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. That good gift that will change our lives forever. Father, give to us in the name of Jesus. And let someone come back before this altar of God and share that unbeatable testimony to the goodness of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that none of us will remain poor in the mighty name of Jesus. And for the works of God, for your work that you want us to use this money for, Lord, perfect your work in the name of Jesus. Said you that have begun the good work, you said you are faithful to complete it to the end. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that the good work that you have started in four square river day, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you complete it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you all the glory. As your children will give you their offering cheerfully, oh God. 
Father, make something, do something new in their life. In the name of Jesus Christ. As from today, Lord, as they will dance to the front and give their offering. Father, let them dance a new dance. In the name of Jesus. Fill their mouth with songs of victory. In the name of Jesus. To you all be all the glory. To you God be all the glory. To you God be all the glory. To you God be all the glory. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All free time. My Jesus today. appreciate you Lord for your love for us. Thank you Lord for the blessings you have been blessing us since we have started this service this morning. Thank you Lord for all that you have done in our lives. Our joy rejoices in you because you are our Father. You are our God. We give you praise and glory. We exalt and honor your name. And we say Lord be that exalted in the name of Jesus. Now is the time to hear from you, to pray, Father, that you will speak unto us in the name of Jesus. Let your word, O oh God, come in a simple manner and grant unto us understanding of your word. And let your word be a blessing into our life, to our spirit, to our soul, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that every one of us that have come before you today, no one will return back home the same way that we came in Jesus' name. Let there be your holy name. Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. 
Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. This is our month of new names, and so I want to congratulate you again as I congratulate myself. This morning I'll be sharing with us the topic which I thought uniqueness of new names from God. Uniqueness of new names from God. This is our month of new names, and I believe many of us will have been receiving new names and they will have testimonies before God. And those of us that are here to receive, I pray today you will receive your own in Jesus' name. I like to read the scripture from the book of Isaiah, where the tip text is taken from. Isaiah chapter 62. I will read from verse 1 to 4. Even though my message covers from beginning to the end, from 1 to 12. I will read because of our time from verse 1 to 4. And I read, For in Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the dead Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. And all the kings thy glory. Thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the land of the Lord, and the royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. For thou shalt be called Elsiba, and thy land Bula. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. Father, again we say we will breathe upon your word, and let your word multiply its blessings upon our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes ago, there was a meeting between some Christians and uh, they were attending a Bible study and they were teaching. And one of the students asked the teacher, he said, why do God honor his word more than his name? He said, why? And that's according to the word of God in the book of Psalm 138, verse 2. And that's David who was saying there, why praising God, that God honor his word more than his name. And the teacher responded and, uh, and he said, said, look, many of the names that we call God, they are my men. They are men, the scripture, that call God who we know God is today. But the word of God is written by God himself. It is his word. And that's why his word, he honors it more than his name. And today we see also that men give names unto people. A man, men or man also give names even to God. Man gives name for two reasons. The first reason why man gives name is for something that he has experienced. He's trying to tell God, this is what I have experienced, and for so reason, this is what the name shall be. A man also gives reason for what he's expecting to experience. But can I tell you that God gives name for two reasons also? And that is what our speakers have been telling us. God gives reasons. And the reason why God gives names is for identity and for eternity. God gives names for identity and for eternity. His word comes from him, but his name came from God. We call him El Shaddai because he is the all-sufficient one. 
We call him Jehovah Rapha. Because the Lord who heals. We call him Jehovah Jireh because he is the Lord who provides for us. I'm going to be looking at this topic in four different ways. And I'm going to be very brief because I make sure I manage my time and even before the time I got it. Why do you think or why do you think we need new names? And these are the four reasons that are the four things that we are going to be looking into uh, quickly now. We give reason, we give name because of unacceptable human transgression. Unacceptable human transgression. And two, we give name because of unquestionable divine resolution. Unquestionable divine resolution. Thirdly, we give name because of unquestionable divine reposition. For God to reposition you, he will give you a new name. And lastly, we give names for unquestionable divine restoration. And I pray that somebody under my voice today will be restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. My topic again is the uniqueness of new names from God. Because if you look at the scripture, we will see that the new names we are talking about is to be given to us by God. And today, God will give you a new name in the name of Jesus. Unquestionable human transgression. Unacceptable. Unacceptable human transgression. And that's the first point that we are looking at. Do you know that every human transgression is unacceptable to God? There is no acceptable sin by God. The people of Judah were experiencing the consequences of their disobedience to God. The northern kingdom of Israel had already fallen to the Assyrians. And Judah was facing the threat of powerful Assyrian Empire. That's the reason why Isaiah wrote this passage. The reason for their fall was caused by deviation from God's divine instruction. And many of us today, we also fall in line. We transgress the word of God. We disobey God flatly and in a way that is not acceptable even of the God. Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30, because righteousness exalts the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We all remember what happened in the book of Genesis chapter 3, when man fell, Adam committed sin, and when God was coming to look at him and his wife, do you know what happened? They went and hid themselves, because they knew that they had transgressed even the instruction of God. What God has told them not to do, they have done it. And they were appropriating, you know. It was the one you gave to me that made me to do it. And I ate it. And God was very annoyed about it. Man sin against God. And I want us to remember that sin, which is human transgression, attacked the true identity of man. Right from the Garden of Eden. So you need a new identity. When you sin, you need to repent. So that God can accept you back. God does not like those who sin at all. And that's why he planned our salvation through Jesus Christ. Sin defies man's identity before God. That's why the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 59, told us that God's ears is not shutting to hear us. He said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shutting that it cannot see. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. He said, But your iniquities are separated between you and your God, and your sins have hidden faith from you that he will not hear you. I pray in the name of the Lord this morning that what will not make God to hear you you will not do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. But you must run away from sin. Because Bible says that the prayer of the sinner is an abomination to God. So if you want new names, you must do away with sin. Sin, which is human transgressions, open up all kinds of reproaches. When we sin, we find out all kinds of attack. 
there are some sickness that are from, as a result of our sin. And there are some sickness that perhaps is as a result of maybe our tiredness, stress, or any other thing. But I want to tell you that when we commit sin, you know, just for example, when God asks you not to do, not to forgive, or when when He tells you not to commit adultery, and as, as you did it, as a result of that, you have you have, you, you, you have uh, uh, diseases that you will need to kill. Then you can see that it is not God that has given you that disease; it is you, through your carelessness, through your disobedience, that makes such reproaches to come upon you. And I pray this morning in the name of the Lord that every reproach in your life, the Lord will take them away in Jesus' name. Sin confronts, sin corrupts, and condemns the image of God in us. So, brethren, I want to encourage you to run away from sin. The major sin of Judah to God is their persistent and widespread idolatry. When we read Isaiah chapter 2, verse 8, Judah sinned. They, they continuously sinned against God and God was unhappy about it. As we repent of our sin, God will give unto us a new name. So sinners will get a new name today as you repent of your sin and you come before God and God will have mercy upon you and he will give unto you a new name of the saint in Jesus' name. Number two, unquestionable divine resolution. Isaiah 62, verse 1 and 2. We can see here that God was saying that he will not hold his peace. He said, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem sake, I will not rest. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as lamp that burns. When God wants to unveil your identity, by giving you new names, he announces his unquestionable divine resolution. This is a resolution by God. God is saying to you and to me, he has said, I will not hold my peace until you change, until you have a new name. He said, I will not rest. He said, I will enforce righteousness on you and I will grant you our salvation. God is always prepared once we repent of our sins to grant unto God salvation. Number three, unquestionable divine reposition. We can see this in Isaiah chapter 62, verse 3 and 4. Isaiah 62, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Then thou shall no more be termed forsaken. God is repositioning you here. He said, you will no longer be termed forsaken. He said, neither shall thy land anymore be termed desolate. In other words, God is repositioning you, taking you from one level to the other. That you that have been forsaken, you will no longer be forsaken. God is looking into your situation. And he said that you shall be called F Zipa. Hell Zipa. He's saying that your land shall be called Buddha. And because he delighted in you. He delighted in you. When God gives you new names, he will reposition you from oblivion to ovation. God will reposition you as from sinner to being a saint, to a believer. You can see. The repositioning of God, it will take you from grass to grace. And that will be your portion today. It will take you from being forsaken to be the delight of God. To be the delight of God, to be held sleeper. From death to Take us to the last point on this message. The first one, which is called was the unacceptable woman transgression. The, un, the unacceptable woman transgression. And I told her that when we commit sin, God is not happy about it. And so we need to live as the children of God. We must live in obedience to his word 
And the second part of it was that the unquestionable divine resolution of God, because God is saying he will not rest until you change. He will not rest until he gives you a new identity. And I told her that the unquestionable divine reposition of God comes upon us when we have resolved and have changed from being a sinner to be a believer. And that God changes our position from position of being oblivion to that of omission. And lastly, I'm discussing about the unquestionable divine restoration. And today, God will restore us in Jesus' name. Whenever God calls you a new name, it comes with entitlement that you cannot question. By the, by the value of the new names, you will be restored in your relationship with God. You will also be restored in your fellowship with Jesus. Because when you are restored, you will have fellowship with God. Adam who was running away from God before, once God forgives him, you will be able to have relationship, you will be able to have fellowship with him, you will be able to discuss with him, having fellowship, praying, asking God, direction, and all the rest of things. That will be done. Once we, 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 we are restored from our sins. And we'll be able to have partnership with the Holy Spirit. By virtue of your restoration, you will be entitled to eternal life. And that is what is most important to all of us. That we sh our focus should be how we will make heaven at all times. You will be entitled to eternal life. You will also be entitled to eternal joy. You will have peace, eternal peace with God. And finally, you will have eternal prosperity. Eternal prosperity. This will be your portion. It will be my portion today in Jesus' name. Amen. Any name that God did not call you is not your name. He has resolved to call you my delight. And that will be your name from today in the name of Jesus Christ. He has decided to call you His glory. But do away with sin. And your new names are here for you today in Jesus' name. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. Keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There is a race I must run, I must run. There is a race to be one, to be one, give me Do not 
they did with authority, they give names as a result of things that they are passing through or give names as part of the things that they want to experience. But when you go give us names, that name lasts. That name is unique. That name is delightsome. Lord, we pray today that you will give to everyone hearing me and those that we still hear me, those of us under, those of us online, I pray that the Lord will give unto you a unique new name today in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of the Lord that the Lord will take you from the oblivion to the light, light in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will take you from grass to grace in the name of Jesus. I pray that all the challenges that you are going through today, the Lord will relieve you of them all in the name of Jesus Christ. We will grant unto you peace, eternal joy, eternal peace in the name of Jesus Christ. It will grant unto you eternal life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Let's serve in the name of the Lord. Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Shall we rise up? Let's take that song again. Give me through, Lord Jesus, give me through. Give me through, Lord Jesus, give me through. sinners, men and women that are, are afflicted with all manners of reproaches. But Lord, the moment we had an encounter with you, in which, in, in which you have your delight, that Lord, we have become members of the company of the saints, members of the company of angels. Lord, we thank you. Our prayer is that, Lord, we will not go back into those things, Lord, that brought reproach into our lives. But, Lord, we will continue to live under your divine restoration. That Father, we will not look back. We will not go back into those things, Lord, that we stain our lives. We ask that in the name of Jesus, you will delight in us. And not only, Lord, in, uh, in us, you will also delight in our land. And Father and our God, we pray this morning. We know that you love. You love sinners. You do not hate sinners. But you hate the sin that sinners carry. We therefore ask, Lord, that as many as are still living in sin, may they have a taste of your love. May they have a taste of your mercy that is available. And the grace of God will draw them unto you. We thank you for hearing us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank you, Lord God of heaven, for your servant that you have used. 
to minister the work of the ones. We have and all those that have been ministering since since we had this view, both on Sundays and at our various Bible studies. We are asking Lord that we will Not what man calls us. Man can call us Tieti Poju. But we know Lord God of heaven. With you, there is nothing like that. Bible says, uh, be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is. We ask Lord that you help us, even to remain perfect in Jesus' name. No stain will be associated with us. So that, Lord, as we look unto heaven, hey, we ask that, Lord, none of us shall miss it. Amen. We thank you for hearing us. We commit ourselves unto you afresh this week. We pray, Lord, for all the activities of your children. As many of them, Lord, as are having them, one in you or the other. We pray for your supernatural intervention. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We commit that daughter of yours who will be going for surgery. Lord, during this week unto your hand. We lift up our hearts unto you as a church. And we pray that you will go ahead of her. Amen. You will take control of all that will take place there. We are asking, Lord God of heaven, for your divine favor, for your divine visitation. Amen. And we are asking, Lord, that there shall be no human error. Amen. She will go back, she will go there safely and come back home safely Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, during the week, we receive so many prayer requests on our email address from people we do not know, but you know them. And they believe that when we lift them, their prayers before you, that there is a God in heaven that answers. And therefore pray for all those, Lord, prayer requests. Those that are sick in the body there, you will push. Amen. Father, those that have one need or the other, those that are having problems with uh, relationship problems, we are asking Lord for your supernatural intervention. Amen. And we as a church, you will help us Amen. to be faithful as we pray concerning all the, the various prayer requests brought to us. Not only in the church, but even in our quiet time. We thank you, Father, for hearing us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to thank you for your for your visitation, Lord, with us today. We are going from here. Lord, we are asking that we will not leave your presence. Amen. Your presence will go with us. Amen. And you will meet each and every one of us at the point of our needs. Thank you, blessed Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord keep you. Amen. May the Lord cause the light of his countenance to shine upon you. Lord, we ask that all our brethren, those who travel outside the country, we thank you for their safe, their safe arrival. Amen. And we don't know by the time they be joining us at this meeting, it shall be another glorious fellowship together. Amen. The glory is yours. Amen. The blessing shall be for us. Amen. Thank you for hearing us. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Shall we share the grace together in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shall we share together Psalm 23 verse 6? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. And have a great day. Amen.